So let's talk a little bit about defining data and where that data goes. If you come out here and you define a variable int my int, that gets that gets stored in the it's it's basically a static int. It just sits out here and it's global to everything. And in your executable, the compiler makes some room in the program image that says, hey, when, when you load this program up, we need four bytes for this int. It's four bytes on my machine. But anyway, so then everywhere I want to, I can say my int here gets 10. And then if I'm in another function, void another function. And I can also access my int out here because the scope of my int is basically where it's defined and everything nested inside of it. Well, since my int is defined on the most outer level scope, then it's accessible both in here and in here. And there'll be only be one instance, if you would, of my int. So thus, this int you can consider it to be static, meaning uh, main doesn't get its own version of my int, nor does m another function. They both share my int. In fact, just to prove that they do, I'm gonna I'm gonna move this. Oopsie. I'm going to move this function up here so I can call it because C++ reads from top down. Um, let's print out my int here in line and then I'm going to call another function and then I'm going to control L to cut the line, paste it back in and then paste another one down there. So we're going to look at the value of my int here. We're going to run another function and then we're going to look at the value again. Well, you'd be wise to pause the video here and think What's the output going to be on both of these? All right, so pause the video. Okay, I hope you did. Let's run it, build it. There we go. So you can see here, since I assigned my int a 10, uh oh, let me bring that back. My int, I assigned my int 10. We print 10 there. Call another function. It accesses my int as well. And there we go. One copy of my int between everyone. Now watch. Watch what happens, actually. I should cut this line again. Let's paste it right here. Even before I initialize my int, I'm going to print it. All right. So pause the video and think, what's the output going to be for that line of code? And I'll run it, and we can analyze it. I, I, I know what it is. Hopefully you can figure it out. Whoa, look at that. It's zero. Okay, just one of the rules of C++, when you define... A variable out here and you don't assign it a value, it gets put wrapped up with all other variables that you define but don't give a value. And that whole chunk of RAM gets initialized to zero. So that's kind of nice. But let me do something kind of weird. I think we're done with another function, so I'm going to get rid of another function. And I'm going to take my int here and get rid of that. And I'm just going to define my int in main. All right. Well, what RAM does my int get now? I didn't put it out in the static uh, code space here. It doesn't. It's not taking up any room in the program image anymore. It's actually here in main. So when we define variables like this, these variables get put on the runtime stack. So there's basically three types of memory. Well, there's a bunch of other little ones. But the main ones you need to know are the heap, the stack. Those are the two main ones. Then there's the program image, which is basically everything that's not defined in a function or instantiated via new out on the heap. All right, so this is on the stack now. And last time when I when I had my int defined out here, it was initialized to zero. Okay, but now I'm defining it here on, on the stack, and I'm going to print its value. In fact, I don't need to initialize it after I print it and uh, pause the video. Think, what's it going to be? Let's run it. Oh, I'm getting a debug error saying, hey, you're trying, this is actual, actually Visual Studio being nice to me, saying, hey, you read a variable before you wrote to it, but actually C++ doesn't really, I mean, hardcore C++ doesn't do that for you. So let me let me turn, turn my project settings so it won't do that for me. The way I do that is I say, hey, don't do all the debug checks that you're doing. Let's go to release, lean and mean, run, build. Look at that, no longer zero. We get... Well, you can think of it as garbage, but actually what you're getting, or what we're getting, is the memory that was already on the stack there before. Okay, how that memory got its value of 18471, whatever, it doesn't really matter. I define my int right here, and and the in the code it says, okay, well, here's here's four bytes for you. And we didn't initialize it anything, so we got garbage. Now, this carries on a little bit, even if, this goes true for anything you define on the stack. So if I say class int holder okay 
and I shove my int here. Let's let's do two ints actually. I'm going to call it a struct because because I want it to default to public. But my int, let's call this one. My int two, and uh, you know just for kicks, even though it's an int holder, I'll call it double my double just to go against everything that that I believe for int holders. <laughs> okay, so let's define one of these int holders on the stack. All right, well, it's the same thing as I define, I, I said int my int here, but now I'm saying int holder, holder, which is the same as saying, well, give me an int, give me an int, and give me a double. Enough RAM for all of that. Notice we're not initializing any of the values anywhere. Okay, so if I say holder dot, holder dot, uh, my double, or let's do my int one first. And I'm going to control L again, control V, V, V. Uh, my int two, and then this is going to be my double. Well, what are the, what's the value of these going to be? I defined them here on the stack, and now I'm printing it. What's the value going to be? Well, pause the video. Oh, of course it doesn't build. Why not? Int hole. Oh, I forgot my semicolon. That's how I always do that. Okay, run that. There we go. More garbage. Huh, that's interesting. My int two got the value of zero. But it doesn't really matter. I mean, it's just whatever was there. Okay, no big deal. Um, what if I turn around and I define int holder out here? What's the output going to be? Okay, well, hopefully, hopefully, you remember when I defined my int out here, that it just got wrapped up in some RAM that gets initialized to zero. Well, the same thing here, except now I'm just saying, when I say int holder, I'm saying int int double. So we run that, and oh, look, everything's a zero. Okay, so... If you define things out here, you don't need to worry about initializing them, but you probably should just to be a good programmer. On the stack, nothing. Ha no, if you don't initialize it, you get whatever was there before.